Okay, welcome back. Right, and um, this is recording. Is this recording? Speaker view, gallery view. Okay, I get some time. Right, so again, um, I'll put about five minutes uh, before everyone join in. Okay, but I'll continue what I said just now. Okay, but um, for any newcomer, right, again, I need to like um, put the chat and then everyone put the link right for any newcomer that you join in from the 11 um, AM session uh, here is a spreadsheet that to keep our communication after this uh, as a community uh, so please feel free to put down your name and your email so that later on we can keep in touch okay and also for me to know like who have joined and, and you can put some remarks like uh, comment on this session and so on on and what you want to do right and also uh, as a platform for future communication or, or not live communication we we have uh, our Facebook page that we have the group so join like our page and, and join the group so that uh, we can discuss more things uh, we can share information and so on in the group later on right then um, also yeah <laughs> maybe later on I will ask everyone to turn on your camera so that we can take a selfie later on okay but we'll keep that later okay so now let's go back to our slide okay so if you have any problem please send in the chat group but okay let me go to this one and uh, share computers I'll optimize share that recording yeah I guess so low system resources uh, okay I, I don't know because like I have the previous movie is in converting. Okay, so I hope my PC can <laughs> uh, tahan still the end. Right, so this RoboCup at home. So everyone know about this RoboCup at home. Okay, so now the next story. Okay, so because for this session, my purpose is to... Like, this is annoying. So can I actually move this thing somewhere else? Oh, okay. I can move somewhere else. Ah, good. I should have known this earlier. <laughs> okay, so the next thing that I want to say, so how I actually started this and how I actually got the idea to put this into education. Okay, so everything starts from research. So for me, I my background is um, on, on research um, and also uh, robotics research and so on. So I, I research on intelligent robots and, and now it is about AI and robotics. So uh, my purpose is to how to because competition is a good way to actually test how good is our creation in our research our work in our research so I always want to join robotics competition I joined I started my robotic journey actually from robotics competition actually okay so um, I, 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 I because it's a long story so I cut everything into one slide uh, just to save the time so this uh, I call it from research to education because I start with the purpose. I actually want to create something to, to join the competition, right? So this competition is just not what I just said. It's the RoboCup at home. So it's about um, building service robot. So I need to put in everything that I know about AI, everything I know about robotics and to create cool application. For example, like how to talk to people, understand people, follow people, track people get something and so on. And the real world application, I just show you in our previous session, like now, for example, in the COVID-19 uh, scenario, we can build robots that help us to deliver our stuff. And even we can build robots to actually communicate for us. For example, like, okay, I, I, I received a chat. Okay, yeah, thanks to you. All right, so um, yeah, so that is the start, starting point. And, What's so important about all these things I've explained in the previous uh, session? So for, for anyone that joined now, right? So maybe later on I'll put up the video and you can refer to uh, the rerun, okay? The replay of the video. Right, so um, how I get started to have the idea of converting my research work, which is this, to, re to, to education. Okay, because of the few reasons that I just now I just said, robotics and AI literacy, the gap between the current robotics education and the actual problem-solving robotics research. And the third one is about how to actually bring whatever robotics um, research in the lab 
bring it closer to the reality, which is how to shorten the distance and so on, right? So um, for me, when I first joined this robot cup at home in 2014, in fact, I joined start from 2013, but I cannot finish a robot in 2013, right? So the first, um, uh, my robot, you can see on uh, the top. Okay, so this, this was the, my first prototype, okay, together with one of my friend, student, okay. Um, I built this robot and joined this competition. And, and you can see, um, I always make a joke about my robot is because like I'm actually not building robot like this, which is all using a very uh, professional hardware. Like they're using professional AGV, they're using professional arm that they use in industrial, industrial grade sensors and so on. But what I'm using, during that time, it's actually a Roomba light platform. So it's a floor cleaning robot that I can buy like in like less than 1,000 USD. Then I'm using a RGBD sensor that I say just now is a very, uh, uh, how to say, it actually changed the research world <laughs> for robotics uh, after Microsoft released this. But this is actually a component for the Xbox. So it's a very affordable sensor is less than um, 200 USD, but it can give you very nice um, effect of tracking the human motion and so on, because that is what you need in your dancing game and so on. So I, I bought two of this, I put up, and then I use a very simple, you know, those um, education kit robot arm. So I put on that. And then after that, I put on my laptop. It's, a, it's not even a very strong laptop, it's an IBM impact. Okay, so I put that. And the whole thing costs less than maybe less than 2,000 USD, okay? Right. But during that time, I have the motivation of, I feel this is possible for this kind of development is because the open source thing. To build a service robot, we need to make the robot able to move around knowing the direction. Okay? Even human takes time to learn how to move around knowing the direction. For example, like you, you enter a supermarket that you've never been for, you ask to find something. So first you find which section, you ask people, you ask the uh, salesperson, where is this and so on. You look at the map, then finally you reach the section, then you use your object recognition to find whatever shampoo you want. Or now if you want to buy like, you want you go to the market, you want to buy the fish that you want, you want to buy the, the, the vegetable that you want. So these are all intelligent, okay? It's, it's not very mechanical, it's because like a lot of perception, a lot of um, decision making and so on. So these are very high intelligent that how I can build all these things into my robot. Although the hardware is very simple, it's just a Roomba, uh, no, it's a floor cleaning robot base and a $200 uh, dollar sensor and a laptop that I have a very uh, standard computing power, okay? Just like a laptop that you use for listen to the Zoom now. Um, yeah, so how I can use this hardware to actually enter this competition, uh, that's where the story starts. So I built the robot like this, the prototype like this, as compared to the rest, which is using very different grade of uh, hardware, I actually feel that um, my hardware actually achieved quite equivalent result because for service robot, it is not about uh, reliability in a long-term operation. It is not like your robot has to move uh, 24 7 throughout a whole week and so on. No, it is not. It is like just the five minutes in the field and you're supposed to achieve the objective of the task. So long-term reliability and accuracy, okay? It is not very um, high requirement. For example, I ask you to come to this point. So it is not like you need to have the accuracy of 0.00 something millimeter and so on. No, you don't have this kind of thing because for service robot, important thing is it follow the human feel. For example, you ask someone to stand in front of you. You don't need to tell that person how far it will stand, right? Because uh, from social etiquette and social culture, we know how far to stand in order to be, um, to be good manner, right? You don't stand too close, you don't stand too far, you stand just nice. And that just nice is something that we also expect the service robot to, 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 to have, to behave. And that is actually not easy because that is no longer a uh, scientific distance, but it's more on the cultural distance and so on. So that require intelligence. Okay, again, for example, like how the robot speak to the human. So it's no longer like you deal with the ATM machine, right? 
so you write everything in a proper English and so on. Because when you build service robot, if your service robot is talked to a children or talk to some old people and so on, you want to speak in a language that this group of people feel comfortable. Right. So the humanity part and so on is what required, not the mechanical accuracy, mechanical reliability and so on. So I look at this point, which means service robots actually don't require very high um, requirement in hardware, but more on the intelligence. So that's why I feel I can use very simple hardware, like what I just showed you, but I focus more on the AI development. Okay, so I built this robot, right? Then I, I joined this competition. So to my surprise, I don't, I, I, okay, I don't get first prize or anything, but I able to complete certain tasks. And that's very important because with the cost of maybe 10 times lower than the rest of the robots, okay, maybe one ten of the, the rest of, because the rest maybe take about 10,000 plus and so on. My one is like 1,000 plus and so on. Okay. But I achieved the same effect. For example, there is a task called follow me. I still remember in 2014, the only task that I completed is the follow me, is the follower task, which is the robot have to track a person from point A to point B. So that is the thing that I, my robot achieved. And I got certain point. And this certain point actually make my robot prove that I can actually do something as compared to a lot of complicated system that fail. Not even like enter the game field, right? Okay. So JSAI, which is a Japanese Society of uh, Artificial Intelligence, actually acknowledged uh, my proposal that we should think another way to do uh, at-home development by using easily affordable materials. So they gave me this award, but they also um, want me to actually share this idea and make this thing how to say, um, share among our community. So what we do is like, um, so what I did after that is like, I package everything uh, into an open source project. So I open up to let people uh, learn how to build the same thing. And I even upload my code, source code and so on, because everything can be purchased. I mean, like you can buy all the materials from online store or from the shops and so on. And every things you can actually download into your laptops and, and run the robots exactly like how I did. Okay, so with that kind of um, method, I open source the whole thing and I actually got something like this. So this is the first prototype that uh, I pushed out for, for RoboCup at Home Education. So in 2015, I started RoboCup at Home Education. It's the initiative to actually promote this platform for service robot development learning. Okay, so this is how all the story started. Okay. Then I also proved myself, I sent this to robot. Maybe you can't see actually, my robot is too small. It's just this one, okay? We sent two of this robot as compared to the rest, <laughs> okay? To the international in, in, in Hefei 2015 Robo Cup. And our result, okay? Oh, oh sorry. It's seven out of, oh yeah, I cannot move my mouth. It's seven out of 17 qualified teams international. So we actually entered the semi-final and we got number seven, okay? Top 10 internationally with our robot like this, compared to robot like this and so on. So it's very proud, okay? But important thing is, what I want to tell you is like the, the recognition, not just the recognition, is the confirmation that regardless how simple your hardware, the important thing is how we can use simple thing to solve the problem, right? Okay, then that's why uh, the rest of the class is like, I'm going to tell you how I built this robot and how you can learn to build this thing and for your application. Maybe you're not building robots, you are, you are AI lecturers and you want to do this thing. Yeah, we have a lot of AI things inside here, right? Okay, so RoboCup at home education, so the initiative, uh, previously we have three um, operations and now we have four, okay? So the general purpose is to boost some educational effort for at home participation and AI focus um, certain robot development, okay? So we have four main uh, efforts. So the first thing is we, do competition, we call it the education challenge because we know that for at home competition, the, the standard is too high and uh, it's just like F1 race. So not everyone can join F1 race. So I create something that similar using the F1 race rules and so on, but I open, you can use any car to join. That's the idea of um, education challenge. And we also run this in national level, in regional level, for example, in um, 
Asia Pacific, in European car, and so on, and also in international level. And last year, um, in November, I did uh, this uh, education challenge in KLESF, in MICE. So I hope this community can actually continue this effort in Malaysia and for all the friends that from other places, uh, we can actually set up your own community by providing the materials and resources we have to your community so that you can set up your own activities and so on within your local community. So the first thing uh, we can do is education challenge. So for all the students, uh, lecturers and, and whoever that is interested, okay, even you are not affiliated to university or school or anything, and you are just a family, yes, we can join. I mean, we have teams that comprise of family member, the father and the son, the mother and the son, the daughter, and so on, and they just form a team and come. It's totally fine, right? So this education challenge is open for anyone and everyone, regardless your background and so on, and we don't have age limit, okay? But of course, we, we will separate it to like the junior category and the open category and so on, but everyone can join and you can join in any form, okay? It's either from the university, from the labs, from research lab, from your school club or family. Everything's fine, okay? Right, so that's the first thing that you can join us. The second thing is uh, we open source some um, educational robot platform, right? So this is the, 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 the research development that we, we have been working on and support uh, within our community. So the idea is we have this that I just show you the robot platform. So everything is open source from the hardware to the software, everything. And now um, what I'm doing is like, I try to outreach this solution to all the community, local community, for example, like the, the Malaysia community and the rest of the community. I have this in China as well, uh, in Japan and so on. So once these resources or this, this open source project is within the community, the community will start to pour in their effort to actually make the platform better and also uh, within the community, they also will source, for example, like the local supplier uh, and industrial partner will come in and say, ah, why don't you, you use this sensor or why don't you use this, I sponsor you this sensor and so on. And for example, like our strong partner, MatSlab, come in, and Mass will come in and say that, ah, why don't you use our MATLAB software? Uh, I give free license for all your teams and so on, which is true. Yeah. So MATLAB actually provide free license for all our team in order to reduce the complexity of um, programming by giving a lot of graphical user interface tools uh, for advanced stuff. For example, you want to do machine learning and so on. Now we can do everything in MATLAB without writing a lot of code from scratch. From scratch. You don't need to use all the library um, to run your machine learning and so on. You can just use MATLAB toolbox to do that. Okay. And, and we have uh, uh, another set of um, teaching materials for that. Right. So um, the robot platform is something that within our initiative and how you can involve is like you can use this platform or whatever hardware software that you want, the AI tools and so on, in your teaching, in your research, and that is what I hope you can use this as your involvement in our movement. Right. So the third thing, okay, so there is a second thing that you can join us <coughs> by using our platform. Or the better still is like you can join us by feedback us your development to make our platform better for our community. Right. Okay. So then the third point is open courseware. So um, I understand that uh, a lot of teachers uh, want to teach students about robotics and AI. But um, unfortunately, we might not able to find very simple example or easily understand example that the student, the, the teachers can directly use without the teachers actually gone through the, the effort to learn everything, all the technical side, then only they can able to do, which is, it will actually use a lot of time, which is not very possible for teachers and so on to do so, especially when this is not your profession. Maybe you're teaching other things, you're teaching science and so on, but you want to introduce AI and so on. So what we do is um, I try to put all my workshop materials, especially those outreach workshop materials that I open up for school children, for general public. So I, I design and develop those kind of materials in a very easy follow way and also simple theory. I just explain the general concept and then I show you how to use the tool. Okay. So I try to, okay, I'm still working on it. I, I try to put up, so you can go to our website, you go to learn the page, then you can see a few sets of um, slides, source code and so on. So 
um, my workshops and also this online class, the purpose is to show you how to use all those things. Okay, right. So if you want to, you can join us by using these materials for your teaching, for your even university class, because I'm using these materials for my class in university, third year student, uh, robotics software engineer, right? I use that, right? So you can use, so, and it's open source. So by all means, you can use it, but of course, uh, we appreciate that you can tell people, more people to actually come and use our software, right? And also the best part is like, if you can share with us your experience when you're using such thing, and you can share with us like, okay, I use this for my class and this is my activities and share with us your photo videos and we will love to hear all those things. We want to see how our materials actually help the education for all the local communities. Right, okay, so this is um, the third one, the open source uh, courseware. Then the fourth thing is, yes, so the fourth thing is more on how to outreach this thing to, to, to build up um, local uh, community. So later on, I will show you our organization and also how far we have outreached our program. But we uh, personally, I also run a lot of workshops um, through various hosts because me, myself, I can't really host a lot of activities in your place, okay? Especially I'm not local in your, in your area. So it will be uh, the way how we collaborate is like you organize uh, the event in your local community and we try to bring the materials to your place. Whether I bring it under RoboCup at home or through our industrial partners and so on, there's various ways we can do this outreach. But um, you need to gather your people so that we can do this kind of thing. And also you have to do the organization so that we can come in, bring the materials and show it to you. So in our outreach program, we have a lot. We do local workshops. Workshops over here means hands-on. So we have the um, all the kids with the PC, we bring the robots or you have your own custom-made robots and, and we do that. And during the workshop, we can have mini challenge and so on. Yes, and we can do this in anywhere. I mean, I've done this in, in, in a lot of places. So you, you can arrange it. For example, you want to do it in your school. You can um, bring a few local schools together and do a workshops. Yeah, we can arrange that and so on. And for all the students that you want to have like one month internships and so on, we actually have this kind of opportunity. Later on, I'll show you some example like um, how you can join us. Uh, academic exchange and so on, right? So, um, bottom, our homepage, we, all the materials are explained about this four point is on the, on the web. And um, join our Facebook page and join our group and post your comment, question, everything there and we'll communicate from there. Okay, right. So now, um, let me spend another 10 minutes, all right, to explain and show you some example of this four where how you can actually involve or join our activities to actually enhance and empower your community. Okay, so this is the overall ecosystem. So the idea for me is not like, okay, I come to your place, I push everything to you and that's it. It's not like that. It's we try to work together to set up your, your whole local community by having the ecosystem. So the ecosystem is like, First, for example, like you interested in this, right? So we give you the materials and then we connect you to various party stakeholders. For example, um, our sponsor will come in maybe to help you, for example, like provide you some uh, commercial services, some industrial support and so on. Then um, university, for example, um, maybe you are school. So I bring in uh, local university partners. For example, in Malaysia, we have many university, uh, we have many uh, professors here. So maybe we can like have a team of people to assist uh, for all the activities for all the schools, right? High schools and so on. So the university can set as a host and then link up with all the, all the high school students and then we can do some activities. So these are all how, how it connects. And then for us, we can bring you the model, how you want to run the competition, the education challenge, how you want to run the workshop, we have all the materials. And also um, for research and teaching, how to build the robots, we have our commercial partners to help you sourcing the hardware and so on. And also for the outreach, we have our sponsor, for example, RoboCup Federation to sponsor your exchange program and so on. So we will try to connect all these things and slowly build up your local community. So that's the idea. Right. Okay. So this is just to show you how far we have gone. So these are all the names. So I put down the name and the affiliation just to make sure to tell you that this person exists. So we have 
like in four continents. Um, and for your information, like last September, I went to Africa, okay, uh, Aka, Ghana. So hopefully, like we can cover the fifth continent uh, by setting up their community. So we, we, I have outreach there, okay, but hopefully we will set up the community soon over there for them to have their activities. But they are very keen, okay. But for the rest of the world, for example, in Asia, so we start. I started from Japan and Malaysia and Thai and so on, and now I'm in China and so on. So yeah, it's it's working. And and India recently they just uh, organized uh, uh, India Challenge um, right before the outbreak. So um, yeah. Okay, then in Americas we have like US, Canada, Mexico, and Europe. Yeah, very strong, a very strong partner in Europe, Italy. Very sad now for the Italy case now, but hopefully the Europe will recover soon. And in fact, I have like four to five outreach activities in Europe for next month, which is all got cancelled. Sad to say, but now we try to think of another model, online model, and see how we can do the outreach in another form. Okay, but of course also for Australia. So this is to show you all the peoples that we work together over the world and this network is very useful for example like later on you might have um, opportunity to go to other places for exchange and also we can have our activities uh, workshops or also um, challenge in in regional form in international form and so on right okay then um, okay almost 11 30. okay so just to show you um the list. Um, unfortunately, this all upcoming event, most of them got cancelled, <laughs> unfortunately. And even the one in France, which is the international for this year, I'm not sure because they said they will give the final decision by end of this month. So most probably since the Olympic is also delayed, most probably this one will got delayed, but don't know until when, right? Okay, but just to show the list that we have for this event that you can join. And for community in Malaysia, just to give you information, next year RoboCup will be in Thai. And it will be very good timing for you to start now to prepare and to aim next year 2021 RoboCup in Thai. Okay, right. Okay, then, okay, just to show some photos, just in case that you don't believe that it happened. So in RoboCup Japan Open, start from 2015 until 18, we actually have photos 19, 20, this year, okay, right, until 2019, we have the photos. And then, that is for the national game. Then we have um, regional game, Asia Pacific, the first time in Thai, uh, 2017. And you can see we actually have, um, so that was the first time we involved high school students. So these were all high school students, okay, we have high school students. And also, these three uh, were one family from India, okay, and they are high school. And I think like this girl maybe is a primary, I'm not sure. Right, so it's young enough. And, and for all my teens and so all my students are all like undergraduate, okay? And we have workshops during the competition, so that is very different. So you can actually learn, because the competition, the education challenge itself, the purpose is to learn. So we even have workshops during the competition to show you how to improve your performance in the competition, right? Okay, then we have very nice um, organization in, in Europe that they have this European RoboCup Junior Championship that have all the people from Europe, uh, Italy, Portugal, Spain, Austria, and so on. They, yeah, and, and they, are, they were all high school students, right? Okay, um, 2018, first time we organized international level. So in Montreal, Canada, we have 11 teams all over the world. Um, 40 participants and from nine different countries. Then uh, RoboCup uh, Junior, this I started 2019 in, in China. So they have started in China and um, they are all high school students. Okay, you can see like with the hardware and so on. Unfortunately, I'm not in this photo. I'm not sure, maybe I'm the phot photographer. <laughs> right, then um, Okay, 2019, this was uh, last year international, uh, big crowd, we have over 70, uh, 15 teams from seven different countries. And um, yes, our robots, and you can see our robots getting more interesting because like for children, we also uh, focus on the aesthetic value of the robots because um, service robots supposed to be very close to general public. 
So the appearance, everything is very important as well. Okay, so that was uh, all the education. So for all the students and teachers and university teams and so on, if you are interested on joining the competition in international level, yeah, please come to us and, and, and form your teams and we will discuss and plan how to, to, to get ready yourself for the events coming. Okay. So the second thing is about the uh, open source robot, educational robot platform. So we built our robots based on uh, the open source um, TurtleBot 2, which is an educational platform for us. But um, not just the base, but we also built ARM, um, uh, speech system, vision system, and so on, in order to uh, perform duty and also challenges in, in at home. For example, like autonomous um, traveling from point A to point B. Then we have um, yeah, real-time object avoidance. And then we have, just now maybe you can see like the mic and the speaker, but I mute, so you can't really hear. It's actually in, uh, communicate with the, with the human. And also over here, it tried to um, detect something by vision. Then it has an arm to actually do the manipulation. Right, so we extended the, we extended the TurtleBot 2 uh, system to become a full package for service robot development. Okay, but this is a very basic uh, platform. Current, recently, we, we have worked with a various partner, our industrial partner, and we have something uh, as cool as this. Yeah, something like the, our robot, recent robot, because that video was taken in 2014. So recently, our robots open source platform look like this. So it's already upgraded a lot, upgraded a lot. Okay, open source resources. So this is for the learning. So you can use, we have our open course where which is all the PowerPoint slides, uh, all the explanation, all the materials that you need. And then we have our wiki for the tutorial. So uh, if you are a developer, you want to know like how to install ROS, uh, sorry, how to, uh, yeah, how to install ROS, how to install TurtleBot, how to install certain thing or how to run certain program and so on. Yeah, you can go to all. But the wiki is a relatively new, I, I still work on it with my student. Then source code, these are all the free source code that example. Okay, and this uh, source code is very important because I will be using mainly the example over here for the coming classes. Okay, so for example, the speech. All right, very, very interesting thing is like um, later on my class will be like, I will show you how to um, build some cool application. For example, in the first, uh, in the, the next two class, right, I will start with the speech. The speech is I will show you how to build a smart speaker. I don't know whether you call it smart speaker. It's something like the Google Home or like the Amazon Echo. So how to build something like that with your laptop. Okay, so I will show you how to achieve that. And, and we have the example here. So you just need to download the example. I show you the simple way how to run the code and then how to put them together. And you can have your own private Google Home, but not Google Home, your, your, your own um, personal voice assistant. Right, then we have some video. Hopefully we can update um, some video. Our video is like all very can, candid, like it's not professional taken, but yeah, it shows how our robot works. Okay, so these are all the examples. We have the speech module, we have the vision module, navigation module, R module, and also apps, like um, how, to, how to do a, a complex task or integrated task and so on. Okay, um, so two things like previously, we have the open courseware and also hands-on workshop. So these are the general guide, uh, outline. So we have all this module and, and it's actually adding. Okay, in speech, we're adding a lot. In vision, we're adding a lot and so on. And now I started, this online class. So I will try because like I can't use all the materials here is because of the limitation of the hardware. So I'll try. So currently I have planned this seven content that hopefully I can fully do all this thing in this online platform, which you can realize all the exercise and everything with the laptops and whatever hardware that you can find within your reach in your house. Okay, so this is the, the things that we have for learning. Okay, uh, almost reaching 11.40. So last, um, just to show you just now, we have the outreach. So to show you some statistics. So I accumulate these statistics from 2015. Yeah, so 
almost gone through, yeah, this is the part that, yeah, we need more. And also, yeah, um, South America and so on. So hopefully, we actually have a lot of plan this year to, to, to outreach to more places. But unfortunately, now, everything locked down, so I can't, and my teams can't really, like, move. All my plan and everything got cancelled. Uh, the outreach and so on, but hopefully we can come up with a new way to do the outreach. Okay, so the the spirit is still there. We want to do this thing, and hopefully we can come up with a a new way to do it. Okay, but just to show you, like yeah, so these are all the activities that. We, so if you are interested, please uh, contact us and discuss with us how to actually bring this thing to your place. We can organize workshop talks. We can do challenges. You can apply for a change and so on. And now we have this online platform. I hope we can think of something else with this online platform as well. Okay, so remember to join our online community and, and we'll discuss more about that. Okay, just to show some photos, okay, before the ending of this session. So these are some talks and seminars I did in China. Um, Hands-on workshops, so I did in Malaysia as well. This one, 2017 in UTM. Then um, in, in Japan, and then in Iran as well, as far as Iran, and, and many more. Okay, I just take some. If you want to see the whole, I have actually all the photos for all these activities I posted up on our website, so you can go and have a look if you're interested. All right, so, and also just to show, like, we work with industrial partner, Mass World, Robotics, and media, but now and media is a bit quiet, but hopefully we can work on. Um, we, we try to put like Jackson TX2 on, on robot, but it seems a bit hard to use, <laughs> especially for beginner. So we still end up now, we more focus on using Intel, which is a PC system. Right, and I have uh, run this class for three years, uh, and currently I'm still working on and and why we have why I have all these online mat materials is also because I'm currently doing my class online. Okay, so um, it's a third year undergrad student in the university in China. Okay, they are learning the same thing. Yeah, they are um, undergraduate third year. Uh, also for the research community, we 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 publish our activities in academic meetings, right? And also we do uh, workshops. In, in, in conferences and so on. And for student development, um, yeah, some students, they uh, got opportunity internships and, and scholarships and after the join activities and so on. So stay close and work. Yeah, and, and, and um, when there is, there is some opportunity, I will, I'll keep everyone in, uh, posted uh, through our community and so on. Okay, so I'll come to the end. So um, uh, I put all the links that you, you want to continue using. Um, our website, our courseware, all the learn, learning part, learning things that you can. Join our Facebook page and um, group. And also if anything officials, you can contact our organizing committee um, through this email. And with that, I would like to open the session for discussion. <laughs> okay, I think no more. This is the last slide. Yes. Okay, so can I have any question or any things that you want to ask? Okay, so I will stop here. Yeah. Okay, I will. Uh, can I know when uh, will you release the schedule for next week classes? Uh, okay, okay, maybe uh, let me put this thing down. So I, I, I just started this, so I'm not very prepared uh, yet. I, I have still developed. So next week should be confirmed on the 1st of April, same time. And um, yeah, if let's say I don't need then I will, I will use a single link, but I'll, I'll work on it and then see how it is. So um, I try to, yeah, I haven't put, okay, I'll, when it is decided, I'll put the link here. So please stay close uh, to this page. And and I will I will update the schedule, and hopefully if I can match with I, I try my best because now I'm not sure whether I will go back to China next month. I'm not so sure yet, uh, and then I also don't know my schedule next for next month. So it is a bit hard for me to to to, to say now, as you know now the situation have a lot of drastic change, but I will try to keep 
every Wednesday morning. Is it okay? I mean, like, since all of you can turn up, so I think like this time should be okay. So I would like to um, maintain the same hours every week and I'll put up the Zoom meeting link here and I'll put the slides here. Okay? So is that okay? Yeah, and, and, and this is uh, my, my outline. So I'll try to stick to this content and I'll put down the time slot when I have uh, confirmed with my schedule. And of course, like throughout the time, I will uh, update the slides. So for example, today the slides over here, then the slides I'll put up like for next week's and so on. Yeah, I'll do it um, as we progress. Okay. Well, for the next week, uh, we'll be, we'll, will we be using uh, Linux already or still Great. Windows? Okay, so as I explained just now, so today I'm just giving you a background so to, to let everyone know what I'm trying to do for this class and also the motivation and also how you can join us. So for next week, it's about the system overview. So the overview is to tell you what to expect in the development, okay? Then the second part is the development setup, which means I will tell you what kind of software you need what kind of hardware system you need to prepare and what software to install and how to do it. Okay, I will explain next week. But what I can tell you is you just need a laptop that you can use it for development. Use it for development means it's not critical. It's not like if anything happened, like you mess up the software, you might like need to reformat, things like that. Okay, so what I want to say is like, I just hope that you can prepare a laptop that is not critical, which means not like, for me, it's like I separate my work laptop and my development laptop because if anything happened, then I will lose all my work with data, which is, that is not, that's something I cannot afford to lose. So, um, I would say if you can have a simple laptop, okay, no need to be very, very, uh, how to say, high spec and so on, just a normal one, simple one should be enough. Uh, and then, I will show you what software to install, how to do the setup, and so on next week. Then along the way, I'll tell you what to prepare. But for next week, you just come and listen to me, and I'll tell you how to prepare and what to prepare. Hmm. So, so don't worry, okay? Next week, we are still uh, just about to start to, to install software, to, to get ready, okay? Because from the third class, from the third class only, I will start, um, yeah. This is, yeah, I will start the, the programming part. So you will have the time from the second class to the third class to, 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 to get your system ready. Okay, any more? Question? Thing you want to ask? And, and I, would like to, I would like to have some feedback. So if you, you want to join next week, that is fine. But if you feel that uh, you want something else or this class is not something you look for, and you look for something else. Maybe this is the time that you can put on remarks if you don't, don't want to tell me, uh, like in general. I mean, like turn on the, the, the speaker and tell me, but you can put in the remarks. But I appreciate like if you can feedback to me because I just designed this class not long ago. I, I really have no idea and I'm open for uh, any opinion or suggestion to, to, to make this class interesting and relevant to you. So if- Hello, you, doctor. I have some question. Yes, yes, yes. Hello. Yes, I'm good. I, I'm listening. Yeah, in the previous session, in the previous session, mm -hmm. you told me about the WhatsApp group. So how to add in the WhatsApp group of Robocop? Okay, because WhatsApp is quite private. So if you have anyone in your in your community that 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 is that is in our group, then we can add or else uh, by the way, like may I know who are you? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so can, can you like tell me at least your name and your affiliation so that I know like how to reach you? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so your name is... You, you're from which university? Ali. Sorry, I can't... And from Malaysia, uh -huh. Uniten. Oh, Uniten, okay. So I think if you can read Zafri, you can reach me. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Zaf, are you there? Is it your student? Hello. Okay, I don't know why, but it seems... Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so yes. Hello. Right, yeah. So yeah, Uniten, I'm a student. Uh, I'm Uniten from Uniten, is, Malaysia. Okay, Uniten is within our network, don't worry. Okay, I'm ex-Uniten as well. So 
uh, current contact person of yeah. me, I will like nominate Zafri so you can contact him. <laughs> then you can get. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Actually, she he's my supervisor. Okay. Ah, okay, okay no right. Problem. So, so okay, yeah. So, um, if, uh, but I would say the safe part is like you just join our Facebook group because that is something that everyone can access. Just join our Facebook okay. group, and then uh, and then from the group you can you can contact me. You can you can you can uh, PM me and so on and and we can discuss from there because I don't want everyone to write down your phone number because that is a bit private. Uh, so in order to join uh, WhatsApp group and so on, maybe uh, we will do it privately. Okay, but we have the email okay. and 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 I hope everyone is comfortable to share your email with with all of us. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Right, so yeah, and it's okay. So we, I will share this email list to all the stakeholders, everyone, including uh, everyone, right? So everyone will have your email, your name, your affiliations, and, mm. and, and we will share information among this. But um, as a platform, I will suggest we use the Facebook group for, for our future communication, right? But if you are comfortable with email, you can always email me, okay? I have written my email there. You can always contact me from email, okay? Right. Any more questions? Um, I have another 10 more minutes before I end. Uh, apparently, Zoom didn't cut off. <laughs> yeah, so, right, so I, I saw some chat. The base hardware is Thunderbolt 2, yes. We are using Thunderbolt 2 and simulator like Gazebo, yes. I will use Gazebo, but maybe not that early. I will use Gazebo for uh, navigation. Yes. I will use Gazebo for navigation, but not for everything because I still focus on real hardware. So that's why I want to use the real speaker, mic, and, and, and camera because the same thing, you're going to use it on the real uh, robots. For Gazebo, I will use it for uh, the development in navigation, which is in, in quite a last, the last session. Uh, you can see like uh, the last one, and not the last one, maybe the second last one before the arm. So uh, I will use the Gazebo as a simulation environment to test our navigation code. Since we don't have the actual robots, we can use that. But uh, I'll make sure that the code that you use for Gazebo will, is the same navigation code that you can actually put on the real robot and it will work the same. Okay, we, I will show you how to build a map in Gazebo that you will be doing the same thing when you map the real environment and also how to control a robot to, to go from point A to point B uh, with path planning and so on uh, in Gazebo. But um, later on, you can use the same thing when you connect to the real robot. Yeah. So I don't really like use Gazebo a lot, but I will use it when I need it for navigation. The rest of the class, yeah, you are quite okay to just use whatever you have with your PC and also the software system that we are going to set up. Yes, any more question? Question, question. Yep, 10 more minutes. I'm going to stop this session by 12 uh, so that we can, we can proceed to the next event. And um, next week, um, 1st April, 10 a.m., we will meet again. And that time, I will explain to all of you how to start the development. So you just come, um, I'll tell you what to do. But if you already got some experience, you can straight away bring your, your Linux um, Arm Ubuntu uh, system, which is we are using 16.04. Then you can install ROS. So for 16.04, you are going to use ROS Kinetic. Okay, so that will be the system, uh, the version that we use for this class. Okay, so if you already have the, the, the basic, you can, you can bring your, your machine with all those software. Um, I will explain to you like how you configure uh, for our development. For those people that knowing, without knowing anything about all these things, don't worry. Next week, I will explain to you uh, how to, uh, what, what are the things that is needed and how to set up your, 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 your machine. So all I ask is like, you just bring a laptop that's not critical uh, for your daily use, but you can use it for development. Right, any more thing? Yeah, I, I hope to hear some feedback. <laughs> okay, anyone? Have anything to ask? Hello, doctor. Yeah, uh, it's Ali again. 
Hello. Yeah. Can I ask you the questions related to my error, which I am facing right now? Er error. What? What? What error you mean? Like coding or programming? Yeah. When I connect uh, on the SSH, the my oh. data board using SSH connection, and I do always uh -huh. the T mapping. Uh huh. So when on my workstation laptop, mm. or when I open the always, so it gives me the error of no TF. Oh okay. Okay, it means, I, I, uh, I no idea anything. how. Are you are you do are you using um virtual box or something? No, I'm not using virtual box. Mm. Okay, I'm not too sure because this kind of technical question, I think is more is because I need a lot of information. For example, like how you set up. What is the error log and so on? I would appreciate if you keep this uh, question uh, to discuss in our group. It'd be nice, okay? Because you can post your your screenshot like the error, and you can explain like your 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 version and what you try to do. You can show us the code and so on. And then because it's not easy for me to read all those things now, so I will appreciate if you can um uh, use the our community platform. To, to discuss on this thing and also not just me but everyone um, I'm sure inside this list there are many which is much better than me in, in all these things so yeah I hope to gather this community and we can help each other right okay so if you have no question <laughs> uh, I only have about five more minutes so can I like ask everyone to just turn on your camera for a while so that we can have a group photo <laughs> just for yeah just just to just to just to like yeah is it okay everyone just turn on okay so i hope it's recording so it should be in the video and i have everyone so say hello <laughs> i've been like on my 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 video cam like for the whole session, which is I never done this even for my class. <laughs> but uh, I hope we can use this as a don't don't feel this is a very formal thing. Okay. Uh, I will prefer to build this platform for our community sharing. So I really hope like being a Malaysian, I hope I can bring up this Robo Cup at home education community in Malaysia so that we can do more things together later on because I found that we actually have a lot of people love to build robots. I mean, I know I was ex Robocon team and so on in Unit 10 and yeah. So I really hope we can actually, uh, how to say, build up our community so that we can do something that we are proud to, to show to the world. And in fact, now is the time that for the, for the COVID-19, people like, you can see a lot of video clip from China showing all the robots to do all those kind of things. And, and I, I'm, I'm very sure like in our community, we actually have the knowledge and also the capacity to do the same thing. Right. So I actually hope we can unite together to, to, to let people hear what we can do. Okay. Right. So yeah, of course, like, but, but not forgetting like friends from outside Malaysia. I have friends from China as well, from, from, from Macau and so on. It's in the list as well. So, but don't worry, I mean like I'm not doing this exclusively for Malaysia only because a Facebook group can be joined by anyone. Um, so I just want to build up this um, RoboCup at Home education community and, and feel free to use this platform and hope we can actually uh, gather together to, to, to bring up uh, the development for our community. Okay, so can I have like, <laughs> how come? No more? So everyone, please at least flash some image and, and, and I, will, I will close after this. If you have any comments and anything, and not forgetting that like, put down your emails and, and join our Facebook group so that we can keep in touch. And I hope to see you next week, right? Anyone you want to ask? No more? <laughs> okay, so I, I don't know. I want to put a screenshot. I hope it works. No, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure about it, but it will be in the in the video, right? Okay. So if you have nothing else, I will um, end here. Okay.
In fact, actually, can talk longer. I mean, I have a class. My class is usually three hours, but I I think I will cut it short for the first time. Um, if needed, then later on I might extend the time a little a little bit more. Uh, because later on, um, uh, I will I will do programming. I will run code. Okay, so just now you see the screen. I will run the code. I will have the Linux terminal. I'll run the code. I will show the effect and so on. And those kind of operation maybe will consume more time. So future maybe I will I will put it longer. But please tell me if let's say um you feel the timing. I I, I really hope like you can you can give me some feedback because I have no idea. This frankly speaking, this is my first Zoom session. Okay, with all of you. This is my first time to do this kind of online class. Although I've done a lot of this session with my class in China. And mind you, I'm actually speaking Chinese inside that class. So I'm using English now. So it's a bit different for me. And also for this platform. So I really hope like we together can design what we want for this class. All right. So please tell me, please give me feedback if the timing is too short or you feel like I'm, I'm talking too fast and you want more or, or anything you want, please tell me what you want, okay? Anything, so I hope to build this thing for all of us. Is it possible to have a class on weekend? I think you might want to spend your weekend for other, or, or is it because like this is your working hour? <laughs> I'm not sure. Since now everyone work from home, I'm not sure will this thing actually disturb your, your working time? I'm not sure do you still have your working hour? <laughs> Yeah, for me, it's flexible. I mean, uh, I will stick to this time, but if let's say I have a lot of, for example, if this timing is not so appropriate for you, you can suggest in Facebook group, okay? And I will gather uh, the feedback. Okay, if let's say like majority will prefer some slot of time, then we will, we will do the, 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 the adjustment. But if not, then we try to keep it as this. Is that okay? Right, so last minute before 12, I'm actually up uh, close to the time. And, and I have all your faces in the video, so which is nice. Okay, uh, last one, just um, I will put this video so your faces, whatever you say, and your text and everything will be on the video. And I will put this thing on public, okay? I might upload to Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, Facebook or YouTube or anything. So if you have any privacy issue that you don't want to disclose your face or your name or anything, please tell me or else I will put everything on. Because for me, I put everything up on the net to share with everyone. So if you are not okay, then please tell me. If you don't say anything, I will assume everyone is okay for me to use this material for our my later, I'll promote this for my outreach and so on. I will show the videos and so on. So if you're okay, then yeah, okay. So it's 12 and thank you very much. It's a very nice session with you guys. And I will see you next week and have a good day. Okay. Thank you and bye-bye. Yeah, have a good lunch. Yeah, please join us and, and tell us more, okay? In Facebook. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Okay, I will wait for you hey. to log out, all right? Bye. Yeah, I'll wait for you to log out, then only I will log out. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.